What's the deal? It's your boy J Mike. IPF Worlds is finished for 2018 for me. It's still going on in Calgary as we speak. Um, as many of you guys know that I competed in the Masters category Saturday, uh, I believe that was June 11th, um, June 9th, uh, 2018. Um, I went into this meet with the best prep I've ever had. But at the same time, it was a lot of pressure on me. Um, it's a lot different when you're the favorite going into these kind of events. Um, last year, I was favored by almost 200 pounds over the next nearest competitor. And, you know, it wound up being um, not as decisive as I liked due to losing uh, the airline, losing my equipment and stuff like that. So I had to scramble. But this year, I was like, I'm going to make sure I'm there early, be prepared. Um, have everything ready and I, excuse me and I still mess up I actually left my uh, passport so I thought I lost it temporarily and I couldn't weigh in and I had like an hour to travel 25 30 minutes away each way and make it back in time to weigh in and then warm up uh, I did lose my passport I was able to find it but it was right up to the last minute so I made it uh, with about five minutes before warm-up started so I was able to get a decent warm-up in um, it was pretty nerve-wracking but um, nonetheless uh, I was able to warm up and my biggest competition uh, this year was Jamie and um, Jamie's a huge guy like he's close to 400 pounds he's like six foot seven six foot eight from Alaska real strong guy and um, I knew that if I was off a little bit it was a possibility that I could lose although I was a prohibited favorite by most people um, the warm-up start uh, the weights are feeling great I can tell that I'm beyond from the time I, when I got to three plates I didn't feel anything on my back at all so I knew that I was going to be able to squat but the only issue that was still in hand was was I would I be able to hit depth and they were calling it. It was it was very close out there. There was flagging everybody's deadlifts. I mean, um, squats and whatnot. So I was actually pretty nervous. So what I wound up doing, with the fact that I also um, had to walk almost a half a mile to get to the airport. I mean, um, the hotel. I lowered my opener from 300 kilos to 295 kilos, just in case if I had to had any issues with get, getting hitting depth or anything. Um, but the thing that changed the meat, and I think it changed how I approached it the whole time, Jamie, uh, who's my biggest competitor, he lowered his, he started out lower than I expected. I believe, I thought he was going to start out at uh, 650 pounds with me because I wound up lowering my opener. Um, but he dropped it down to 640. And when he dropped down to 640, I was like, oh, so I'm actually the last person squatting. In the flight, which never happens, um, due to the fact that squat is not my um, best lift, it's probably my worst lift. So he goes out and misses. So when he misses, I'm like, oh shit, um, this this changes everything because now he has to retake that number, and I'm jumping from 650 to 700 pounds. So actually, I go out, get my lift, I crush it, no problems. Um, it looked like nothing. It was an unloaded bar on my back. I attacked the weight really well, um, and I knew that I was going to be a player in this game, and I knew that if everything went well, I'll total over 2,000 from the point where I was at, so I was pretty secure with um, hitting my number. We also had a guy from Canada, I can't think of his name offhand right now, I'm sorry about that, um, and he was right there long, so um, I move up to 317 kilos after I hit my lift. Uh, Jamie gets his second attempt. So when he gets the second attempt, I believe he jumps to 700 pounds, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the guy from Canada jumped to 700 pounds, or 705, I believe. So uh, after I go out for my second attempt, 700 pounds on the bar, uh, they had some weird lighting situations out there where the lights were really, really sharp and bright, um, but you kind of had to just stay focused and concentrate on your lift. Um, I bury it, come up with it, um, I lost a little position. I do something with my head. I need to address um, going forward uh, where my head kind of gets out of line. And when it happens, it kind of causes me to bobble a little bit. Well, I did that on the 700. 
but I got the lift. And once I got the lift, I was pretty much assured that I was going to win the competition because I knew what I could bench plus what I pull, it was going to be pretty hard to beat me. Um, but what wound up happening is that I went to 317 and I believe Canada went to 320. So when I went, uh, was going for my third attempt on squat, the coach was like, I put your number in. And I'm trying to figure out like, what is he talking about? And I know on the sheet that I put, I did 722 in training and I did 717 is the lift that I've missed so many times. So I really honestly thought that it was going to be 717. But when I go out there, it's 330 kilos on the bar, and it's a, it's a master's rec, world record attempt. So I'm the last one to go on the flight. Uh, I believe Canada misses. So when Canada misses, it guarantees me the gold medal on squat. Um, I believe Jamie got his, his lift, which put him in silver. And I'm now out there with 727.5 pounds. And I get the weight out, back it out, and I didn't feel anything on my back. And when I went down, I kind of was lost a little bit because I really didn't feel the weight. I thought I didn't get deep enough, but I absolutely buried it and came up. Um, but I noticed on video, it looked like a spotter bumped the, the plate or bumped the bar. And that caused the, the bar to wiggle a little bit on my back. So I was trying to figure out why that happened. But if you notice on that particular lift, um, I didn't have any head movement or anything. I went down and just came up. So it was actually pretty good. So the meet's just starting off. I'm three for three going into bench press. And this is where the meet starts for me because everyone knows um, I'm one of the best benchers on the planet right now. But at the same time, um, in the IPF, I have a chance to be one of the best benchers ever. So um, I knew going into this prep um, that I had some, some, some serious goals and I believe that I was going to need uh, 708, I mean 618 pounds to break the all-time world record, and it wound up not being that. That wound up not being the number actually. Um, the number, uh, for whatever reason, we went for. I'll tell you in a second. But anyway, um, the original plan was to go 573, uh, 600, 618, or whatever I needed for the world record. But things kind of didn't play out like that. Um, in warm-ups, I took 500 pounds. I did not like how it moved. So I told the coach to lower it. He was kind of like, why? I was like, look, let's just make sure I secure the win. I know I got 727 pounds on, on squat, which is basically 27 pounds more than I expected to get off of squat. So I'm thinking more or less go into um, um, secure mode um, instantly. So I instantly all the little numbers I had in my head, I was willing to do away with them just to make sure I won the event, won the medals, and didn't even care about a total at this point. Um, so we lower lower the uh, opener to 530 pounds or 529 pounds. Um, Jamie, once again, he's also my biggest competition. And what makes him different than most of the masters is that he also has a huge bench is capable of going maybe 560 plus pounds if on a given day. So leaving squat, going to bench, it's not like I'm gonna be even, then I'm gonna beat the person on um, bench by more than 100 pounds. It, it wasn't gonna be like that in this situation. So uh, he hits his opener, um, the guy from Canada hits his opener. I'm so sorry, I forget his name. Um, everyone hits their openers and um, mine looks like it was nothing on the bar it was literally a waste of time like it was so fast so i went ahead and jumped to 573 pounds which is uh 260 kilos which was a master's world record um single lift and um full meat lift um so i jumped to that number which was, should have been my opener um i destroyed this weight um this weight was probably the best i've ever hit any weight over 500 and 40 pounds maybe it absolutely flew and from that point I was like let's just go to 600 or 589 and the coach was like no we're going for the open world record like who cares you've already basically secured the win with the 573 all you need is 700 pounds for a 2000 total you might as well go all out now so I was like you know what you're right so we went ahead and loaded the bar uh, I believe Jamie 
went. I don't. I don't remember the number he actually went for. But I think if I would have missed the 573 or couldn't have been a lifted, he could have won. So it might have been 540 or something like that. So we go ahead and load it up for the all-time world record um, in a full meet, and uh, the crowd was absolutely going crazy. Um, it was a lot of hype, a lot of hoopla. Um, basically, it was the only platform going once that happened. And I really was positive. You know, normally I get extremely emotional with big lifts, and that didn't happen this time. And I got the and the, um, the person who was doing the handoffs was handing off like butter. So when I got the weight, I didn't feel anything once again. And you know, if anything, you follow me, I had been dealing with dead arm. And the problem with the dead arm is not the pressing, it's more or less controlling the weight on the way down. And I didn't have any issues. So when I started bringing the weight down, I didn't feel anything. And it gave me a decent pause. It wasn't, it wasn't short by no means, but it wasn't crazy long. And once they said press, I fire up and the weight flew off my chest. And once I got to about halfway, it was like a slight stick. And then I fought through it and I'm waiting for the judges to, you know, give it three white lights or two to one. Uh, I just fell to my knees and couldn't control it. You know, I looked like I got shot actually, but uh, that's what actually happened in that scenario. So uh, now I have, uh, I'm on world record for squat. I, I have uh, four world records as a master bencher as well as an open world record now on bench. So going into deadlifts, I have six world records. Um, all I need is 660 pounds to sure up a 2,000 pound total, which will also secure all those world records because these are full meat world records. And I lowered my opener once again from 700 pounds to 660 pounds. So that's, that's basically 40 pounds. So coach, once again, did not want to lower the uh, number just thought, just go ahead and knock it out and then you can play from there. But I, I didn't want to take any chances. I just wanted to secure the win. So we lowered to 660 pounds. I go on out, um, destroy the weight. There was no issue, no problem. Um, this number is actually a number that I could probably do double overhand, no hook grip, um, and feel confident about it. So I just wanted to make sure I got the win in a 2,000 pound total. I believe that number put me at 2,007. Um, then we went to uh, 688, which is another crazy number. I've never, uh, I've never pulled twice and wound up with uh, under 700 pound deadlifts in a competition. But what actually happened in this position, the great uh, Brad Gillingham held the all-time world record because Bufa Muhammad got popped. So I think he lost his, his uh, record for steroids or whatever the case may be. So. The world record was now 2020. So I did just enough to break um, his world record. So uh, we wound up going up. So now after hitting that lift, which I went on out, performed it pretty good. Um, it was still felt a little off, but I, I'm also using a traditional deadlift style that I had not used this whole entire prep. So I get it two to one on the, sec on the second attempt. And I started thinking like, damn, like I'm, I'm close. Like I know what I could pull. I pulled 760 in training. So with me pulling 760 in training, that means I probably could be good for 760 on the platform, which would give me one, 2,105 pound total, which would break the 2,100 pound barrier, as well as the Texas record, I believe, um, and all the master records or whatnot. Um, I kind of didn't want to do that, and if I would have known exactly, I I should have wish I'd have known exactly what I needed for 2100, because I go out for the third attempt, I felt confident. Uh, I went back to my, you know, jump and rip, patented jump and rip, get it off the floor fast, get to lockout, and I just didn't have anything left. Um, before going out there, I was cramping really, really bad, and I really considered not even taking a third attempt. Um, coach put. Coach Paulie put in a number, so I went out and took it. So um, all in all, this was a perfect meet um, based on winning and doing what I need to do in terms of records, but it wasn't nowhere near what I had in the tank. Um, this should have been my first 2,100 pound total meet, and it, it, it's not. So uh, with that being said, I decided to take, an, uh, well, I'll tell you that in a second, but I'm gonna show you guys what I actually won and um, you know, go through what's going on in the future. So, um, now I will say, I'm very disappointed in the medals and the trophies that we received uh, 
for this particular competition. Um, they're not very good compared to what we got in um, Belarus last year. But, you know, I'm going to go through what I got. Um, the first one is a gold medal I received for squat, which was a world record, a Masters World, IPF Masters World record. Um, this one right here is for the bench press. Um, you know, I broke four uh, M1 bench records as well as one open record. And this thing found its way in there as a silver medal on deadlift. And to be honest, which is actually kind of funny, and Jamie, uh, the guy who actually uh, won the gold, was like, thank you for like, giving me a medal. Um, he only pulled, I think he pulled 7.7, seven, I think he pulled 7.05 or something. I could easily pull whatever to, to make sure I got the gold medal, but to be honest with you, I really didn't care. Um, I want, I had an opportunity to go for 2100 and I took it. So there's no regrets on that part. And, um, you know, uh, you know, in a way I wish I would have went a little bit lighter cause I still would have had a shot at 2100 pounds and I could have broken some other little records around, you know, that, that linger around in Texas and master records and stuff. But, um, this one right here, um, this one's a little bit better. It's the bigger version of the bigger medal. This one was for winning the world title. Um, it also has like a little IPF badge on the back. You know, the other ones didn't have that. The the little uh, collars or whatever, really cheap, but that's here nor there. Um, now, when you go to these competitions, this is actually something that I really, really was looking forward to because last year um, I won the world championship, but I finished second for best lifter. And that was mostly because I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to the other weight classes or other people going. So I didn't know what I needed for best lifter. And I wound up getting beat out by a couple of pounds. And if you know, you guys remember last year, I jumped from 562 to 607 trying to break the bench world record. I left a large gap in the middle. And that those could have been easy points for me to get best lifter. But this year, I was able to pull it off and wound up with best lifter um, which was pretty cool but once again not happy with the quality of the trophies it just kind of it kind of sucks compared like I said it kind of sucks compared to last year um, but also as a team we won first place as masters and uh, coach Pauly awarded me uh, you know the honor to have the trophy um, to take it back to the United States so um, that was pretty cool um, I don't know pretty much, <laughs> you know, I like to thank all of my sponsors, uh, Noble Vice Performance, A7, Lockjaw Collars, and all the people who have showed support, you know, one of my clients, Michael Cohen, uh, for helping me, um, uh, you know, make all this possible, you know, uh, you know, they made it, you know, my sponsors and friends and stuff made this where all I had to do was go lift. I didn't have to worry about paying for anything. Um, and it makes things a lot easier when you don't have that huge financial burden on your side, you know, trying to figure out how, how this stuff is going to be paid for. So i like to thank those uh, individuals uh, severely. Um, now, going forward, I still had a little weird taste in my mouth because, one, I don't think, I think I left way too many pounds on the platform. I think that I probably could have squatted, you know, 20 more pounds on squat. I think I might have had, you know, two or three kilos left in the tank. And deadlift, you know, I only pulled 688, so you don't damn sure know I had a, a lot more in there. So what I'm going to do is there's a Summerfest meet here in Texas or Houston, Texas, um, in a couple like two and a half weeks that I'm going to partake in. I do the meet every year, and I basically won the meet every year that I finished the meet. So I'm going to go ahead and do this meet again in hopes of getting a 2100 pound total, a 640 plus squat, and a I don't know what else. Six six forty squat. Oh, six over a six twenty bench. Um, probably six twenty two to six thirty four, and that also would be an all time drug tested world record at three hundred eight. So that's my plans going forward. Um, I, I I'm happy you guys who chosen to watch my videos and follow my journey, enjoyed the series. Um, now I have a couple of things that I'm gonna do with the training footage. Um, a lot of the videos I make they're extremely long. Like this one right here is almost twenty minutes. Um, I will be doing a video of my top sets, basically breaking down my start to finish of my bench reps, 
so you guys can see how I came up with my one max rep and how I knew I was going to be able to destroy this world record. But for all you guys out there, thanks for the support. One athletic freak, Mr. Athletic over everything. Later.